I mean, do you feel like this might be the kind of siege we see some mutas in as well? These players do like that sort of style. As we're going to start off in the top right, representing Abydos, our Red Zerg is DRG. His opponent down here in the bottom left, representing Team Liquid, it's Elazer. We get a start on Ancient System, which is one of the more macro-focused maps in ZBZ. One of the ones you're more likely to play that hatchery first on just, you know, because it is meant to be normal, it is meant to be safe. Early pools aren't going to hit as quickly because the rush distance is longer, so... We might at least be for the first two or three minutes in for something a little bit standard. Yeah, one thing we've been seeing quite a bit over the last few weeks is that 15 hatch opener with the extracted trick. It's something that Sarah has been playing quite a bit too, so I'm curious to see if these guys are also going to implement it in their games. Now, Ancient Cistern, relatively long rush distance, so usually going for a 16 hatch like these guys have gone for so far is definitely the standard, but maybe we'll see some of that later on in this particular series. I do really expect to see Mutas at one point. Like, if the game yeah. gets to, like, seven Especially or eight minutes. Especially from DRG. D a laser too. I actually think they're both pretty big Muta guys. But, yeah, DRG, absolutely. DRG loves his Mutas. It'd be a wild, even in a best of three, it'd be wild to miss out on Mutas completely in this series. So, that's going to be fun as well, because there's also so many ways to do Mutas, right? You can mm -hmm. play the masses of Mutas. You can play the six or seven back into the heavy Roaches. You can play kind of Mutas as, like, a follow-up to, like, Roaches initially. There's just so much kind of, like, interest in what you do there. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of potential. I do think there's going to be some kind of, you know, unit checks early on, of course. Like one guy is going to make a few more links, check the other guy's not being too greedy. Just waiting for all of that to build up, as link speeds are going to be starting on both sides of the map. Yeah, one big advantage of those overlords in this particular matchup is that you can spread them out all over the map. So it's very common that you actually will see them very close to the opponent. When you think about it early on, there's really only the queen that can push them back. So they will have a lot of knowledge of one another. They will have Overlord scouting the main attack paths, making sure that the third bases are taken at the correct timing. And with a couple of Zorklings here and there, they should be able to figure out exactly what the opponent is going for. As long as you compare it to what you're doing, you can figure out if they're making any differences and if there's any changes. So far, though, everything is A-OK. -okay. I think DRG must have seen the drone move across there. So he already sort of knows that the expansion there on the left side of the map has been taken as well by your laser. Super, super standard. One difference, of course, is the laser is a little bit less gas-heavy. Mm -hmm. DRG has been mining more. You can see that he's got more in the bank and he's invested into the Baneling Nest already. So laser a little bit more Ling-focused. Could then maybe go straight into Roaches if you're going to do that. It's quite good to be aggressive with Lings because you want the fight to happen on the other side. You don't want to be pushed into a corner by Banelings on your side of the map. You want to be on the other side, basically. So. I think that's what he's going to do. Probably a run yeah. run behind this and then just continue through, see how these initial links go. DRG is prepping with the right amount of links, though, to deal with this. Yeah, this is a lot more Zorklings than what we normally see in the earlier stages of a ZVZ. Both players apparently just making as many as they can. But like you said, Elazer doesn't have a Baneling Nest. So DRG has already fired up a few defensive Banelings here that are going to be incredibly helpful. Just trying to make sure that the opponent is going to target them down. A couple of links here do get caught right over, and it's not really what the laser is looking for. I think the laser sees the amount of links. He's like, okay, Banelin has to do Let's get my own down here. But losing a couple straight away, definitely not ideal. Now these Banes of DRG coming in from the other side, trying nice. to protect them. He does save one of them. He will be able to use that for just a few more moments. Finally goes off. The laser is able to micro that well. And the laser did get a lot of drones in before he's continued to make lings, and so far the later Baneling Nest has not punished him at all. And this has really been a case of just how much gas has been mined. DRG has been mined so much more. The laser's just had more minerals, so he's got more lings, he's got more drones. And again, he's just not being punished for any of that. Yeah, exactly. So, so far both players mostly just testing the waters a little bit. I'm surprised to see not a, a bigger clash between these armies, right? Now that the Bailing Nest, however, is done, there's a chance that the laser is going to use those links, but he's already planted down a Roach Warren, and I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to be seeing some Evolution Chamber upgrades in a moment, as DRG is requesting a quick pause here. Yeah, Evo Chamber going to be finishing up. Do you think he goes into missiles and just gets ready for Roaches, or are we maybe going to see something like a Carapace first? Or is he going to stick to Ling Bane? What are you feeling? Um, personally, I do really like Carapace-based builds. Usually, you make about 40-something workers, so we'd have to stop drawing pretty quick. And I think in this game, the upgrade would be a bit too late. Um, usually, that is more or less an all-in, yeah. So he does decide to fire up the plus one missile upgrade, which is, well, what is uh, considered to be the standard in this matchup. Yep, Retron comes a bit later. Of course, the laser, he is purely on 
Hatchery tech at the moment. He's just getting his Rotor on. Couple more gases. Still more drones, though. So he is looking to keep on saturating. He still doesn't have a lot of gas to make roaches, even though his Rotron is that much sooner. And at this point in time, I feel as though DRG is really just getting away with, you know, he's getting his lair. He's getting plus one missiles. What yep. is the laser doing? Because I don't see a scary timing coming up because he doesn't have enough gas for roaches. So it's just kind of like, just kind of waiting to see what a laser does. Now he drops an Evo Chimba, but he's just kind of behind on all of these techs. Yeah. He doesn't have a lot of drones, he doesn't have a lot of tech, and he doesn't have that big of an army, right? So in all the pillars of this matchup, he is ever so slightly behind here. Now, it's not super significant. DRG, by the way, firing up seven overlords, I think, here in total. Six more coming right now. That is a lot. I wonder if he's just planning on making a lot of roaches. No. I guess he lost one overlord. He's like, okay, that's it. I'm making <laughs> overlords for the next few minutes. Man, I forgot he made a round, made a second round. Um... Damn, what an interesting little situation. The drone counts are kind of coming up to be an even. Again, DRG's big advantage is going to be faster plus one, faster road speed. These are things you can absolutely use in your favor. A laser is going up to, I believe, now all six of his gases. Mm -hmm. So as the lair finishes, maybe we'll see something more than just road speed off the lair. Maybe we do see that spire coming down if he truly believes he can get to it without dying. It's going to be the big question mark. Exactly. He gets a scout through, sees the lair's done. He's going to be, I think he knows he's behind on the upgrades in general, so... Yeah, we'll see what a laser's plan is for now. Roaches and roaches on both sides. Nudas are amazing in his matchup, but the main problem you run into is that it's also a very slow bit of tech to get, right? Like, you need to make sure that you build the Spire, which is, well, first off, expensive, but it takes a long time to build as well. Usually, if you invest into that, whereas your opponent is making non-stop army, you just simply won't have enough units to defend against their particular attack. Now, DRG not quite done yet with his roach speed up, right? He's trying to save a bunch of his roaches. Nice little catch right here by Elaser, getting a, a bit of value with the Zerklings. This is actually really nice. Yep, getting a few of these kills is kind of what you want to do, especially if you're the one behind on the tech, right? Taking advantage right now, and you can get his big, and he does have quite a bit of army supply in his favor at the moment, so DRG, just kind of trailing behind a little bit. He saw plus two missiles, lost a few roaches. That's given a laser this edge. Not enough of one to keep on going forward, apparently, so DRG will keep his fourth base alive. But laser's getting his own fourth hatch in sync as well. There's still going to be a point where DRG's army should catch up. He is going to have better upgrades. Mm -hmm. Very intrigued if he can make something happen with that because, again, it's been a very slow going ZVZ. Yeah, DRG also a little bit confused as to what's going on. He's been scouting incredibly actively, but he still has roaches moving around to the main base to prevent the potential Nidus network, because you never know exactly if that's popping up. None of that, however, is happening here. Elazer, while just playing a normal, what we consider to be a normal game, just slightly from behind. I think the upgrades here are by far the biggest part, right? So there's about a, a full, I want to say, minute and a half or so where DRG is ahead in upgrades, and that adds up very quickly when both players are making the exact same units. Yeah, a laser is maxed right now, though. If a laser can pull the trigger and get across the map and make something happen, he's got a serious army supply lead. Yep. He's had that for a little bit, so upgrades are even. This would be a laser's moment to maybe make something happen. Kind of trying to get an overlord as he gets positioned. A lot of roaches up the top. He's got a lot of roaches around the right. DRG sees all of this, so he has the information he needs to respond properly. Figuring out exactly how many units you want to split up, though, that's not easily figured out still. Yep, and this is something a laser has been doing for some time, delaying his upgrades and well, getting the Evo Chambers in a different moment than most of the Zerg players do. Excellent play here, though, by DRG. Just simply microing in all of those scenarios, pushing back every single fight here so far. That's exactly what he needs to do. He needs to wait until those upgrades kick in. He needs to try and max out, and he's done both of those things right now. Yeah, he's just taking off the checkboxes, man. He's like, max out, get the plus two. Mm -hmm. The checkbox is on, so you go across oh. and attack and make use of this, although a laser will dive up the right-hand side. DRG now has to attack into this. He has got his plus two finished up, though. If he has the units here, he might be able to take a good fight still. Both players are going to trade out pretty heavily. DRG with a bit more in the bank before the remax comes in. As we continue to take this battle, most importantly, DRG will keep this base alive. He couldn't afford to lose out on a base. And I believe the laser's other chunk of roaches are going to be chased around here. Looks like he will find an escape route. During this, however, two different tech paths are established as well. As a laser wants to go into the burrow and tunneling claws, and DRG wants to tech up into infestation pit, which means hive tech on the way soon, and continuing along those lines. So both of them going to continue from this point, which has been very similar so far, a bit of different supplies, mm -hmm. but very different ideas for the next stage of the game. Yeah, we're going to pivot into two different unit compositions right now. Well, for the time being, it's going to be Roaches and Ravagers. Hydra then, however, fired up here as well for DRG. We'll see him transitioning towards the Hive. We'll probably see Vipers and Lurkers if this game actually goes on for long enough. 
Elazer, however, like you said, he's got the tunneling claws done right now. That allows him to tunnel with those roaches underground, and he's going to probably try to pop those roaches inside of the main base, the natural, multiple areas at once, try and create as much chaos as possible. He needs to catch up somehow, right? And I think this is an excellent way to try and do so. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's definitely one way to do it. I do get worried for a laser, though. He's on a timer, right? Mm -hmm. And stuff oh, like the Bane drop. drops. Yeah, yeah, he's going to hit big. I mean, DRG just doesn't really <laughs> notice what this was. So nine drones going down. DLG's going to pull the trigger a little bit over here. He's going to take a bit of a fight. Still has an upgrade lead right now. Okay, just disappeared. So that's no longer a factor. This is, I guess, where DRG is weakest. A laser really is going to be able to hammer on through while DRG is trying to tech up into those workers. A laser's on a timer. He's got to do something, but he is making very good progress. Yeah, this is actually such a strange game of Zerg versus Zerg at this level, though. Normally, the game is a, a little bit more organized than this. Chaos is all over the map. At this point, while well, he laser scouts the transition as well, he's going to be able to snipe the Lurker then, which is a very expensive structure. Plus, of course, that buys him a whole lot of time. Bailing's over here trying to be annoying, too. 22 drones have gone down in total. Man, we had Lurker Dens being sniped yesterday as well. It's not a good weekend to be a Lurker Den. Nope. Uh, but that is huge because it buys a laser so much more time before the big tech of DRG kicks in. So now, this is a very different game where the clock is basically reset for a laser. He's got way more time than he did before, and he's done a ton of damage. He's got a bank buildup where DRG does not, and a laser is really starting to take a very strong position in this game. A concave down here as DRG gets a bit derped out on the ramp. And this is only going to help a laser further as the supplies are really tilting into our push launch. So it's ants. Yeah, at this point, the laser is just holding down the roach button, man. There's a, an attempted at transition here from DRG to go into some other units, but I think this game will be decided with the roach play. The laser found himself in a pretty tricky spot earlier, but right now he's looking good. 20 dead drones recently, so that's something that's going to continue to be a pain in the side of DRG throughout this. Couple more roaches in the main base. This burrow has been so good. He's consistently getting into great positions. He has completely had DRG on the run. And as this road traffic comes in here for DRG, this might be enough. The laser's still just gonna sneak a few roaches by. Just keep on busy. He's in the natural once again. Again, behind this, he has the money. He has the economy to keep on rebuilding. And he is just putting himself further and further into the lead. DRG might make a Hail Mary play towards Lurkers, but I don't even think he's gonna support nah. the initial set of Hydras. So that prop plan is probably out the window too. And as a laser fights here, this may even be enough to get the GG. Yep, just good old Roaches, Ravagers, and Zerklings deciding the faith of this game. It's Elazer who obtains the victory in game number one. Very aggressive game, mm -hmm. actually, and I would generally say, you know, when we talk about EU versus Korea, we talk about Korean Zergs are like the aggressors. Korean Zergs like to go everywhere. So the European Zergs in the past, at least, that like to be the, hey, I'm going to tech up, I'm going to make my way into these lurkers and so on. This was kind of a, re a role reversal from my expectations, at least, but Eliza played it brilliantly. Like, he knew when he had to step up the pressure. He was everywhere when he needed to be, and he just didn't let DRG breathe. And DRG just never yep. got that moment to stabilize, get set up, and then it would have been very difficult for Eliza to find those openings repeatedly. No, exactly. I think maybe uh, DRG was also thinking, okay, there could be like a lurker transition coming out of my opponent. Maybe there is indeed a spire somewhere. I think this is where things started looking a whole lot nicer here for Elazer. This exact moment here where he catches like four or five roaches out in the middle of the map. And I know that's not super significant considering we saw, well, like a hundred of roaches being made in total in this game. But it is ultimately what allowed that tempo advantage right here for Elazer, right? That's essentially where he started the aggression and he continued the aggression for the next 10 minutes. It's such a weird game building up to this point as yes. well, though, right? Because DRG had all the tech upgrade advantages and stuff, but then he was just so far behind on army supply. Like, and more so than, you know, investing in a couple of tech things should have put him behind. And then obviously Elazer never really did anything. So, like, okay, well, DRG benefits from the tech and he just never really benefited from the tech either, right? It was. Which is such a strange way to get to this stage. And uh, Laser able to take that first map of this best of three. A map away from continuing through into what is a Terran Gauntlet in this section of the bracket beyond this. Kelezer, Bjorn, Clem gets more difficult as the day goes by. But I'd actually say, especially DRG, I really like ZVT. Well, Laser definitely pretty good at it as mm -hmm. well. So a very doable bracket for both if they can get through this initial Zerg versus Zerg. I like the cheeky little painting drop that he did there as well at like the 14 minute mark or whatever. He probably looked yep. at his natural, he's like, hey, I've got two painlings still sitting here. I've already got OV speed, may as well load them up. And I think DRG also was expecting maybe a roach drop or something along those lines. Either way, game number two in his best of three series, we find ourselves on the map Royal Blood. Spotting right here in the bottom left hand corner from South Korea, it's DRG.
And in the top right from Team Liquid, our blue Zerg up by one. This is a laser. All right. Once again, standard hatchery first here from both players at the 16 supply mark. This is what we've been seeing over the last, well, eight years? Eight Ever years. since Legacy of the Void came out? Yeah, eight years. Been a while, eh? I think it's actually been seven and a half, if you want to be accurate. But okay, so I'll let about you, that I'll let you. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, not going to be an early pool. It's going to be hatch, gas pool. Obviously, we did see very different openings evening, uh, even because it was obviously DLG that went bailing straight away. Yeah. Laser bypassed that. And even that part I thought was great for a laser because he was very greedy mm -hmm. and then never got punished for the later bailing Like It felt like DLG should have been able to surge across the map with Lings and he just was never able to. And so, yeah, laser just kind of got away with it. And yeah. DLG ended up mining so much more gas that a laser's opening just was so good in comparison. There was a moment, I think this was like last year at maybe a Home Story Cup or something along those lines, where Elazer was talking about Evolution Chamber upgrades and Zerg versus Zerg, and he mentioned that he actually doesn't think it's that great to get them early on. So for the longest time, we saw yeah. players taking them right after the Baneling Nest finishes at maybe like three and a half minutes into the game. And he's like, no, I actually prefer having another unit out at that point in the game. I'm going to go ahead and save that drone for a little bit longer. It's going to allow me like three, four more roaches by the time that I actually go for my attack. And it still looks a little bit weird to me. It still doesn't seem entirely right, but he's definitely finding a lot of success in Zerg versus Zerg, but none of the other Zergs are really delaying their upgrades, so it makes you wonder whether or not it's actually a good strategy or if it just works because Elazer is doing it and everybody else is just not used to playing against it. I mean, Yasko, I know about it, for example, he just shakes his head, he says, Miko, man. <laughs> yeah, Miko. He, he works in mysterious ways. <laughs> it's, um, it, it is interesting, right? It, it worked for him, but I feel like he's not done that as much recently, so... Yeah. Maybe he also realized, hey, this is so good. It's other things are good. Yeah. No, it turns out uh, upgrades are pretty helpful. But hey, even though he was a little bit behind in that department in the previous game, he still managed to squeeze out a victory. This time around, it's going to be Laser with the faster bailing nest. Kind of interesting how uh, the tables turn in that department. I guess DRG may have also pulled the drones out of gas. But we have a quick look of the main base of the, well, the players here in general. Yeah, two drones remaining right here for Elazer, and I'm assuming the same thing is happening. Actually, no, he already added it back in. Only uh, just, though. Yeah. I got a moment ago before we went there. You went wrong. I Six wasn't wrong. Thank you, Marty. No. You were very correct. 16 links on the way. DLG starts his up just a few moments sooner than Elazer. It's very similar kind of ideas here. We're going to get a look at the aim high segment from the US Air Force, and a couple links is going to nibble up at each other. And obviously, this is just fun little bits of micro going on early. You can see these links going across the map, though, and then the defensive bane setting up as well. So that's getting ready to go here in this game. Yeah, first person view here shows you exactly what these guys are looking at while you're actually, or while they are actually playing the game. Gets a little bit chaotic though. One of the queens does end up going down. There are a few defensive banelings out as well. A few more banes right now though. For our player in red, wandering it over towards the natural mineral line. Can DRG kill any drones? Yep, so far not really looking like he can. He's going to get a few links in now and there's actually not much to stop for a little while. So he will get in. There's a couple of banes chasing him. Still no drone damage done. DRG has taken a worker lead just from droning behind this. Uh, just obviously forcing a lot more units out of a laser. He's now up nine workers. A laser's about to offset that though. Eight yep. drones of his own. DRG will start up the Rotron, an extra gas. It looks like we've kind of survived this phase of the game. DRG makes the next round of links because that's what you've got to do. A laser may attack you right now. So just make your round of links and go back to droning. And it's just extremely similar drone counts all said and done here. Yeah, a little bit of a skill check, right? Making sure that the opponent is not playing too greedily. If we had seen only drones here for one of these two players, they probably would have lost the game already. A little bit of a skill check. If you miss micro, the game can also be over very easily. But none of that really happened here, even though both players did take a bunch of damage. Neither of them are really significantly ahead. Now, once again, look at the timing here of the upgrades. Or the they're off. We're at nearly five minutes into this game. Still no Evos. They're, they're both trying to hatch tackle in each other. But mm -hmm. Believe it or not, going to turn into a macro game because, in theory, if you both hatch tech all in, it's basically just like you're doing the same thing. So there shouldn't be much of an edge. Laser is droning though, so he is going on a higher drone count. Which, as long as he starts making units very soon, he's going to be in a great spot because he's going to have a better drone count. He should be able to defend. It's not like he's putting a lot of money into tech, so he still has the gas that he's mined. He should still be able to match roach count, and then he just needs some lava, spend those minerals, get the lings out. 
I think this could be very good for a laser, but it still comes down to this defense and if he can pull that part off. The wall is good against these lings. He loses a couple of drones on the third base, but he starts to clean up, but the roaches will not be far behind all of this. Yeah, and I think DRG at this point is also realizing that he's not going to be able to deal that much damage, so he also decides to fire up drones once again. And these guys are playing some awkward games of Zerg versus Zerg. I do assume we will see a lair here very soon, and we also will see an Evo Chamber. Both players wanted to end this game much earlier, and... Well, now they're just sort of sitting there with a huge army, right? What exactly do you do with all those units? I think Laser's loving this, man. He's mm -hmm. had like eight, nine, ten oh. drones for a long time. So Laser feels comfortable. He's making a lot more roaches. I, I just hope that Laser's plan isn't to be like, yeah, now I'm going to all in you. You're not going to expect yeah. that. DRG making seven overlords at once a game. It's expensive. Yeah, no, he doesn't really have that many minerals to play with here either. He's already about 10 workers behind his opponent. Now it's DRG who goes for an attack, but Elazer sees this coming in from a mile away and he's already had units prepared. That being said though, he does have quite a bit of money in the bank and DRG is actually turning this into a complete all-in, morphing loads of banelings with this attack as well. Yep, he is just gonna go for it, but I don't think that's the right call. The laser has also not been tacking up. He's just been building units and he has got a lot of army supply. When you're all in into the other guy and he's 20 army supply ahead, it's not meant to end well for you. The laser's already getting beautiful trades against the Banelings and now he's just got so many roaches in comparison to DRG. Wow. DRG just picked the wrong thing for what a laser was doing. He would have been better off trying to tech up and you can see he realizes just how badly this has gone. GG. That is GG and a laser 2-0's his way 